Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again and welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Art Kirsch, uh, we're right around Veterans Day mm. and you are a veteran, by the way. Thank you for your service. It's my pleasure. Uh, Ex-Marine. Um, no, 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 no. And no. We're never ex-Marines. Former Marines. Oh, we're always oh. Marines. We're still a Marine. Get over it. Oh, I, I, I stand uh, corrected. You do. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a veteran. Uh, I got that yeah, part you right. you got it. Good. Well, it was for Veterans Day, of course. Um, you must go to the movies or watch an old movie since we we're, can't go to the theater. Mm -hmm. Well, so here, here's the deal, and I, I hope well, we can get a hold of Manny, but I had a favorite of all time. Uh, it still is my favorite, although I have many favorite uh, uh, movies depicting war, particularly World War II, and that's Patton with George G. Scott. So, oh. so I think we ought to bring Manny in because I know there are a lot more and I have a lot more, but I'm really interested in uh, the development of, of uh, war movies and the reasons why they were produced and things like that. I think Manny can help us out. So take a look. Ma oh, Manny. 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 Oh, there you are. Hi, Manny. How are you doing? Oh, <laughs> uh, you're getting creative in the introductions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're in trouble now. Yeah, well, nobody would know <laughs> that you weren't there all the time because we we just are very, so smooth with that. So anyway, Mike, I, I think we're, we're talking, we fooled. We're talking, yeah, we fooled nobody. <laughs> uh, so we were talking about, as you overheard, you were eavesdropping, but it's okay. Uh, uh, war movies, and um, my favorite of all time is Patton. I must have seen it about uh, at least a dozen times when it first came to the movies. In fact, I think I was in the uh, service at the time. But uh, uh, think go back a long time. Uh, what do you what can what do you can tell us about uh, war movies? Well, first of all, Patton, you can do very little wrong in choosing Patton. That is a fabulous movie. George C. Scott's performance, immaculate. Mm -hmm. uh, the story uh, is 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 good. It's fast paced. It keeps it keeps going, and uh, and I also love Carl Mar Malden. Uh, mm -hmm. He he does a great great job is omar bradley of course another famous general so yes it's a great movie love it uh the origins of war go way back probably into the silent era i mean you get the four horsemen of the apocalypse mm. is a, a war uh a drama uh but when the when the when the silent era ended and we had talkies uh the first magnificent war film obviously actually there were, right before talkies started of course you, you cannot ignore the fabulous production Wings about World War One, right. directed by a very young up and coming director who had experience as a veteran of World War One. His name was William Wellman Jr. Yeah. Actually, w William Wellman was one of the great directors, did so many great, great films, inclu including the uh, public enemy and the Oxbow incident. Uh, the story of G.I. Joe, which I'll get to in a second. But Wings was the winner of the first Academy Award. And it is uh, starring Richard Arlen uh, and Clara Bow. Yeah. And uh, it's just uh, Charles Buddy Rogers. It's just a magnificent piece. And the reason why is because of the aerial shots. He shot the shots of the uh, the plane, the planes that were fighting, the German and the, uh, and the American planes over the background of clouds so that they became more dramatic. And he waited for those clouds and the production of course would go over budget because of that. I have to tell you, it, it was a popular film and it's a remarkable film. When talkies emerged and then of course, another one of those great remarkable films, All's Quiet on the Western mm. Front. Yeah. Really wonderful film. Now, I have to tell you that in many cases, these war films as brave and as heroic as they appear are really anti-war pieces. They actually are created to depict the horrors of war so sure. that we don't glorify the carnage and the blood. And All Quiet on the Western Front was one of those uh, kinds of films. It clearly, it didn't hide the fact that it was a, a film uh, designed to depict the horror of war. Now, you were talking about uh, 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 one of the early uh, aerial uh, Hell's Angels was that uh, Howard Hughes, and he shot it. Oh. I seem to remember something about he shot it twice. 
Uh, yeah. He, yeah, he spent a lot of time on that film. It went way over budget, but of course he's he's the head of his studio, yeah. and so it really didn't matter. And I believe Gene Harlow is in the film, and it's it's an exciting uh, war saga. And yes, Howard Hughes uh, did in fact uh, produce a war film, and it's and it's a good war film, but it it was an expensive. A production and um and he didn't mind spending the money when he wanted to you know getting back i alluded to william wellman he was so uh immersed in the war experience one of the finest films ever made was called the story of gi joe and it showcased the uh the uh, the work of one journalist named ernie pyle who was the first embedded journalist with soldiers a true hero of the 20th century um burgess meredith played him. Uh, Ernie Pyle was alive when this film was made and he got to see the rushes and he was just uh, really impressed with Burgess Meredith's performance. All he asked that he wanted to see an honest relationship between Pyle and the soldiers, which they had a great relationship. And unfortunately, before the film came out, when the film was completed, but before the film was actually distributed, Ernie Pyle was killed by a sniper's bullet in Iwo Jima. And unfortunately, um, his death occurred before the war ended, just like the death of FDR. So uh, Ernie Pyle, a great man, a great hero, a great journalist, and well depicted by, uh, by William Wellman in the story of G.I. Joe. Uh, Manny, how many would you say of all these war films that have been made um, were made during the war as uh, semi-propaganda or... Uh, support for the American position. Um, a lot of films were made during the war. And think of the bravery of the of the scriptwriter. I mean, think you don't know how the war is going to end. You hope that it's going to end in your favor, but imagine that you're making Casablanca, not knowing how that's going to turn out, or you're making Watch on the Rhine, or uh, any number of these. You know, Guadalcanal or or Wake Island. I mean, these fabulous films, and, and they can't really give you an ending because the war hasn't ended. All you can say is, as you say, these were pieces that were made to uh, help, you know, build the campaign for war bonds effort. So they were actually making these movies to help uh, generate and stir uh, support for the war bonds. And, and uh, yeah. You know what I find amazing about those old films, of course, I'm not aware when I watch them uh, today, whether they were made during the war or after the war. Um, so uh, what's amazing to me about them is that they are so good that the storylines are so human and compelling without, as you say, telling me that, uh, you know, that we won the war. Um, they make, they're believable. They're believable, right. even though they're a slice of life. Um, they, you know, it's maybe they, so a lot of them have a happy quote, happy Hollywood ending, you know, but it's a slice of the war, uh, that depicts usually the American side. And of course they're American made movies. So I expect them to be, um, promoting what, uh, Ally, Ally, the allied side. The yeah, allied one of the films of wasn't view. it made during the war 30 seconds over Tokyo. Right. Okay. So that was a, a propaganda to show that we were back in it and that we weren't, in other words, it was a real event. Can I offer a personal aside on that one? Sure. Uh, my, my mom and dad were watching in uh, 1957 that movie on television, this newfangled idea called television. And uh, my mom's water broke. Uh, she went running to the hospital. My dad drove her there. And uh, I was born. I was born. I was in the womb as they were watching 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. So <laughs> basically, basically, you're a product of that bombing raid. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> and I'm... I, Drop and I still remain a big fan of Spencer Tracy, so there you go. So, so there, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of things that we've actually uh, glossed over, not even glossed over, but uh, all the Audie Murphy films. Now, they were oh, post-war. Uh, post-war, and of course, Audie Murphy, as well as, don't forget, Sergeant York. Sergeant yeah. York, the most decorated soldier of World War One, and of yep. course, Cooper portrayed him in 1942. A classic. Audie Murphy uh, came back from the war, a, a broken and shattered hero. Um, they were trying to gloss him over as a star. And the person who discovered him, by the way, James Cagney, and basically James Cagney put him into shape because he was a man that was tortured with uh, with uh, uh, battle fatigue. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, along with Ernie Pyle, uh, went to went to Congress to try to raise more money for the efforts of combating uh, the, the PTSD that we now know exists. It was shell shock of those days. Yeah. It's called shell shock or battle right. fatigue, absolutely. And Audie Murphy is an absolute hero, not only on the battlefield, but post-war for all of his efforts as what he has tried to do for the veterans. And that should never be ignored. And let me just tell you one other personal note on that. My next book, uh, which I believe will be called The Adventures of Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, will do a, a an expose on two actors who were war veterans. Uh, I am calling the chapter Kilroy was here. And uh, the, the actors that I'm featuring are Audie Murphy yeah. and a man who actually fought uh, on the beaches of Normandy, Charles Durning. Mm. Now, who, really? Who was the, wow. who was the, who was the uh, person who came back and was an actor who lost... Both arms. What was that movie? Oh, Harold Russell, The Best Years of Our the Lives. Best years of our lives. Out, that... you know, basically taking a look at how how we treated returning war veterans. And Dana Andrews is magnificent in this film. It also features uh, Frederick March, yeah. Virginia Mayo, and a magnificent performance by Myrna Loy as the wife waiting for her husband. And she, how she never got an Oscar nomination, not only for this part, but for her entire career, is just astounding to me. I do want to mention one thing before we, we move on to this, but this is really important. Hollywood was really tied so many ways to the war effort, especially World War II. They sent their directors out to make documentaries, Frank Capra and uh, 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 John Ford. And uh, William Wyler, uh, they, these were all they were all um, involved with making uh, documentaries to showcase the war effort. And they did uh, very magnificent jobs, I might add. And one other thing I want to please uh, take give credit to, to uh, Betty Davis and John Garfield, who were uh, the creators of, of course, that wonderful uh, barn where people could go in and the soldiers could ha find a respite if they were returning from war or they could uh, go there before they were off to fight the war. Uh, of course, Betty Davis and John Garfield creating this great little uh, respite of an idea. And uh, so popular was this idea that just about every star from every studio would donate their time to play, uh, to perform, to act as uh, dance partners, to serve the food, to wash the dishes, to bartend. The, you know, the Hollywood canteen can never be ignored as one of those great marriages between Hollywood and uh, service to our country. Yeah. Uh, before we go, I just have to mention, um, because we're still making war movies of a different sort. Um, but I have to mention the most recent one, it was directed by Angelina Jolie, and I wish I could remember the name of it, but it's about a guy who, in World War II who had been a world-class runner, if I recall correctly, um, Olympic champion, and he was captured and tortured mercilessly by the Japanese, survived, and wrote a book about it. Right. Uh, anyway, the movie, I love the movie. I, and the name escapes me too, but there's a lot of modern ones we can oh, look at. Are. 1917 was was last year, and that was absolutely. In fact, that's the last movie I, I saw in a movie theater was 1917. And don't don't forget yeah. Apocalypse Now, and probably the best depiction of uh, combat uh, from virtually anybody I've ever spoken to is Saving Private Ryan. The first 20 minutes right. of the uh, right. of absolutely. the beach landing, and just showing yeah. the. Uh, again, they all have, uh, uh, yes, pride and things like that, but an anti-war sense of how random uh, the yes. uh, 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 life is uh, on right. the battlefield. Uh, Platoon, another Platoon. one, um, yeah. mm -hmm. Oliver yeah. Reed. And, you know, I, I before I go, I have to say my favorite war movie of all time has to be The Longest Day. I just love that movie. I had the opportunity of visiting... Um, the, the, the beaches of Normandy. Uh, I, I got to visit Omaha Beach and, and of course, the cemetery and the uh, the, the, the cliffs that are there, uh, Pont du Hoc. 
Uh, I got to visit the area, and then I, I got to see the movie about a week after I came back from Europe, and it's remarkable how they recreated that battle. Of course, Saving Private Ryan, the battle itself is 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 probably the best depiction of that particular D-Day operation. But we're talking about the entire day and the way they, they took these stars and used them in a really a canny way. Uh, uh, Robert Mitchum and John Wayne and Henry Fonda, of course, playing the son of a president, Theodore Roosevelt Jr., and just a litany of great stars in this film. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention my favorite movie uh, about battle, The Longest Day. Yeah. Well, you know, the uh, the real tribute here is not to the movies. It's to the veterans. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well said. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, let's go to a shameless plug if we can. Uh, where can we find out more about what you do, Manny? Well, to be truthful, there's a lot of shame in this. There's no shamelessness at all. Okay. <laughs> but you can go to ForgottenHollywood.com. And, of course, my books, uh, Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, Road to Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, Son of Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, all available on Amazon. I invite you to read them. I think you'll find uh, the chapters are a lot of fun. Well, great. Thank you again for another uh, brilliant session. It's uh, I love going to my, my Forgotten Hollywood graduate school every time we chat. Thanks, Manny. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.